Amazon is set to report its results after the bell today, one of the big tech heavyweights, and it is certainly expected to continue to show the beneficial effect of this stay-at-home pandemic. It may even uh, deign to offer up a profit. Doesn't always do that, even though it often can. It is, though, facing some issues on the labor front, uh, although it's been a mixed bag of turnout in terms of workers unionizing it at Amazon. So far, none have done so. Uh, Amazon has said that it will raise the wages of some of its employees that as the U.S., uh, of course, prepares perhaps to raise the minimum wage across the country federally. All in all, though, it continues to face both love and criticism from uh, everybody, from consumers to regulators. Is Amazon a force for good or not? Ian Lee is a professor, associate professor at the Sprott School of Business at Carleton University. Uh, and Ian, there are so many things that we could debate about Amazon, and I want to take a couple of them in, in pieces because they're all it's such a big and important company that there are many different moving parts. Let's start very narrowly focus here on the labor question. There used to be, a, Walmart used to be the old Amazon, and there used to be a joke saying, look to your right, look to your left. One of those people will one day work for Walmart because that was the rate of its growth uh, 15 years ago. That's probably more true now of Amazon. Are they good jobs, can we say? Do people want to work at Amazon? Um, first off, I just want to mention, uh, uh, I do not consult or have any shares in this company, but I am a, uh, I'll be very frank with you, I'm a very loyal customer. I've bought a lot of stuff over the last, pre-pandemic, I've been buying stuff over the years uh, from Amazon because the value proposition is very strong in my judgment and in the judgment of millions and millions of consumers. But to the wages, um, and I've been discussing this with my students for years. First it was Walmart, and then it was it was now Amazon. And I know it's fashionable amongst pundits, you know, in the big cities, Toronto and San Francisco and New York City, to sneer at $15 an hour. And, and you know, yes, I don't make $15 an hour, and I wouldn't want to make that either. But I have been very fortunate over my life to have done many, many road trips through the United States, over 42 states. And I've driven in rural South Carolina, rural Alabama, rural Mississippi, rural North Carolina, rural Ohio. And where I'm going with this, Amanda, is when you talk to people, and, and I'm a, I guess I'm a rare professor, I do go into, I don't sneer at, at Amazon, I don't sneer at Walmart. And when you go into these rural communities, $15 an hour with benefits is in the United States, in these regional areas, these, and they're much lower income, lower cost, at poverty stricken areas. $15 um, an hour, although it may not seem rational to people in the in the fancy and the wealthiest postal codes in Canada, is, is a very good job compared to their alternatives in these rural parts of the yeah. country. So okay. it's Let not. We shouldn't sneer at it. No, not no, and I don't think anybody... No, I no, I don't think, and I don't agree. Nobody should sneer um, at, at jobs. Although we should note uh, that just because there are people willing to do a job at a certain wage, that was literally the argument used, you know, in the dirty 30s by big employers to keep people down and pay them as little as possible. Someone else was willing to do that job for that wage. Doesn't mean it's a good wage. Uh, but let's park that for a second because closely tied in to the issue of, you know, is Amazon a force for good or evil? Uh, is that the point that you kind of glanced at there, which is you're a user, I'm a user. Uh, we all love Amazon, let's admit it. Uh, it's quick, it's effective, it re has revolutionized the way shopping and yeah. distribution can be done. However, there are lots yeah. of concerns about some of its habits. It doesn't just facilitate the sale of other people's products, it also creates its own and sells them and sometimes undercuts uh, reportedly some of the players that it originally counted as clients. So it is so now large and so dominant that yes. we know regulators are asking the question, do you have a view on that front of whether it, it goes too far in its monopolistic power? Um, I think they're vulnerable. Um, and uh, I don't, I can understand the arguments and I've been following it very closely in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they've been, uh, had a, a whole series of investigations into what they're doing. Uh, they're, uh, the alleged, the, the allegations of abusing their power uh, in the marketplace. I've also followed the, uh, what some of the state attorney generals are arguing. And I can see the day coming, Amanda, when they will say, you know, you've got to break up and take away Amazon Web Services, which is this incredibly successful, gigantic company in the cloud, which is a completely different business, although correlated in the sense that there's synergies. It's a very different business mm -hmm. from 
uh, the retailing of e-commerce products. I can see the day when they're going to force those two to be uh, to be broken broken apart. But I, I hope that you know people don't lose sight of the fact that there is a value proposition. Jeff Bezos was a genius back in 1995 when nobody imagined buying everything on online. And it wasn't just that. It wasn't just that he got there first. He said, you know, I'm going to revolutionize the interface, how we look at a search for products. I'm going to revolutionize the order fulfillment. You know, I'm going to make it easy as anything for anybody to just pop onto their computer, go, type in a bunch of words, and boop, off it comes on the screen, and I'm going to be lower priced than everybody else. There is a very real value, and companies exist to create something of value that you or I want to buy. And I think Bezos, it was brilliant. At, at revolutionizing retail just as much as McDonald's in the so, fast food space back in 1945. Absolutely. Let, let me just toss one, one of the key points here. We've only got a minute and a half for this one, and we'll come back to it in future because it's a big one. But one of the key tests of consumer harm is uh, high prices. If you're paying too much, uh, then we assume consumers are being har harmed by monopolistic behavior. The lesser, yes. uh, the, the, the harder to prove consumer harm is the alternatives that don't exist, right? The innovations that don't happen, the upstarts that don't occur, because right. even with low prices, that giant kind of occupies the space, takes up the air in the room. That's sure. the place Amazon occupies. We do benefit from cheap goods, no question, but are they pricing others out of the market? I think they are in the short run. Uh, I do. I will fully acknowledge that. I mean, when you're underpricing just about everybody else and you offer more inventory, more selection than everybody else, and you can get it essentially in 48 hours now for a lot of their stuff, I mean, that's a pretty difficult value proposition to, to break. But if I can just be a little bit academic here for a moment, Amanda, I, I, still, I still think the most brilliant professor of economics of the last 300 years was Joseph Schumpeter creative destruction. And his central argument, one of his core arguments was, there is no such thing as a monopoly in the long run. He argues all monopolies break down, whether they're legal monopolies or just de facto monopolies, such as Walmart appears, excuse me, Amazon appears to have. And, and sooner or later, they'll get so big, they start to lose focus, they start to lose their efficiencies. You know, there's infighting and, and somebody will come in with a better mousetrap. And so in the short run, we benefit. And in the longer run, and I know Cain said in the long run, we're all dead. But, you know, in the longer run, one day Amazon will trip. One day Amazon will stumble and someone else will be in there uh, uh, so quickly to capitalize on that. And in the meantime, we benefit from having these incredible uh, array of, of, of products across the consumer spectrum at very, very fast turnaround times at very competitive prices. Ian Lee, always good to have your thoughts. Uh, that is the debrief with Ian Lee of the Swat School at Carleton University.